Hello everyone, this is an unboxing of this beast. It's the Renogy 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter charger and even though it tells you the measurements and the weight on the website, it's a bit of a shock when it arrives because it's an absolute beast. You can tell by the size of my hands how big it is. So I haven't opened it yet, I thought I'd just do a bit of a unbox just to show exactly what you get inside. So you get foam, which is good. And I might need a hand getting this out because it's an absolute beast. Um, I'm gonna get this out of here. Well, that was easy, I've got that one out. That's a bag of stuff and Yeah, I might need a hand here, but getting this out, if you don't mind. So, this is it. There we are then. This is the Renergy Beast. So, there's your control panel, push buttons, and then this end is where all the controls are, so this just unbolts, uh, well unbolts on screws, little screws, see cables go in these holes here, and all the connections are inside there, and there's your on and off, and then there'll be a fan there just for cooling, so there we go, and it's got Decent fixing holes for everything. Um, it's got the spec on there as well. So it just tells you the max charge, the voltage, max charge, current, um, your AC input. So obviously when you connect it in, oh, there's your weight, look, 22 and a half kilograms. So it's decent, to, well, nearly 25 kilograms. So it's a bit of weight. Um, the reason we chose this, um, obviously we, we need an inverter. Um, our max wattage, we we think if everything's running at once, which it won't be, so our max is 1500 watts. So we needed a 2000 watt inverter, which is what this is rated to. Um, its peak is actually rated to 6000 watts, um, which we're never going to hit that amount. Um, and if you're wiring for 6000 watts, you're going to need a serious cable for it. So we've only We've actually calculate, calculated for 2,000 watts, which is what this is rated at, and we're never going to go above 1,500. That's going to be our ultimate max. So that's how we've calculated that one. So we could have bought the Renogy 2,000 watt inverter separately, and they don't do a separate charger, so we would have gone for maybe a Victron charger. Um, but this one's got an output of 65 amps, which is a lot so it's going to charge our batteries much quicker and it does all sorts of scientific clever stuff to make sure your batteries are healthy and they don't get damaged while charging because we've got lithium ion batteries so it'll make sure it keeps them healthy and it do, it's got an auto changeover so we don't need any changeover switches so if we plug into the mains shore power this will automatically change over inside and send that shore power straight to our 230 volt supply like fuse board or whatever we've got in there um, whereas usually if you've got separate units you'll need a separate switch to actually manually turn that so that's saved us buying one of those this does everything um, so in here we get stickers you want to be a geek and stick it to your van you can there's oh we've got temperature sensor so i believe i will double check i believe this is for batteries so it comes with this data cable and that's purely for this controller here so that's oh that switch feels nice nice push button that is so the controller's just got an on on error and then just on and off switch there, so you can switch it on and off if you need to. Um, and then this just literally plugs in the back, push fit. And you can take it back out if you need to, he says. There we go. And that just plugs straight into there, which is fine. Um, 
I believe the cover just pops off there. Looks like it does. We'll have a look at that after. And there's just little screw holes to fix that to wherever you need it. Right, I'm just going to take this end piece off here and just show you what's inside. So I think looks like the six screws, six just posi drive screws or Phillips, whatever you want to call it. There we go. So this is what you'll find inside. So what I'll do, I'll start up here and work way around. So RJ11, that's for your controller, which you've just shown you. So that just plugs into there. And then the other end plugs into your controller. So that's just that one. The RJ45, that's just labeled in the manual as just for future development. So I presume you can connect other things to that. I'm not sure what, but you can. Uh, the BTS connection, Sure that just yeah that just pulls out now this is for your temperature sensor so this one here so this will just connect you've got positive and negative there and that'll just go in there but say this is positive and negative it's actually um it's uh, non-polarity sensitive so don't worry if you get it either way around this will work the same either way um then we've got your 230 volt input and output so that's your output there you've got your earth live and neutral and then your input which is your neutral live and your earth. So obviously your input's going to be your shore power. So when you plug into your mains, 230 volt coming in. And then the output is going to be going out to your camper van, 230 volt fuse box, anything you're using, that kind of stuff. So that's that. This connection here is your on and off switch. So that's on the that's on there. If you're using that obviously. That's just there. And then you've got these bits here, these two switches, these are circuit breakers. So there'll be internal circuit breakers on this unit. Um, obviously if there is ever, ever an issue, you lose power, these will click and press and come out. So you just press them back in. Currently you'll feel there's no actually resistance there. But once they flick out, there'll be resistance. So you just flick those back in and reset them. And then the last thing is the there's a what's called a dry contact relay port. So you've got normally closed, common, and normally open. Um, and in the manual, it's just say, stating that it's for connecting generators and making use of the auto gen start feature. So I'm not quite sure what that does. If you can connect anything to that, or if it's handy in camper vans, I'm not sure. But there it is. It's there for you. And then the last thing is the battery terminals. So obviously you've got your battery positive and your battery negative. Now in the manual, we had to ask uh, Renergy for this. We sent them an email on what size these nuts and bolts are because we've ordered everything in advance, like our lugs and cable and everything, and we need to know what size these are, and it doesn't actually say. Um, I haven't The manual that came with the unit is slightly different to the one online. Um, I mean, it says version 1.1 there. I don't know which one it is online, but it's slightly different. So I'm going to have a look through that and note if anything's changed compared to the online one. Um, but these are M8. So I've got a lug somewhere. So here's an M8 lug. So if you're unsure what that means, M8 is the actual hole size. So an M8 lug or nut or bolt will all fit each other. So you can see there, that's an M8. It's got slight wiggle room, but that's your fitment. So yeah, M8, M8. Um, we're running, I think, top of my head is 35 mil to these, so we're going to have a 35 mil to M8 lug, so 35 mil cable in there, and then this end, take your nut off, and then there's two washers, so obviously slide the lug on, tighten her up, job done. Um, and then these are two, you've obviously got two holes for your battery cables to run those in, and then you've got holes here for your input and output for your 230 and for your communication as well so all that's in there so it's pretty handy actually it's pretty nice and the connections these terminals are pretty big um i'm not sure what size they seem they are pretty huge to be honest they'll take a decent size cable i mean big enough for what you're going to need anyway so just an overview on what 
cables we're using for this unit. Now, in the manual, I've just found... Now, the manual online, again, like I say, is slightly different, but in this manual, you'll see here, it recommends... So, the 2000 watts our model, it recommends 200 amp fuse. Now, it recommends a 2-0 wire size. Now, a 2-0 is 70 mil cable now that is a beast and the 300 watt one 300 amp and a four dash zero gauge which is 120 mil cable um which are really hefty now the reason i believe that is is because if you see here if we start on the 2000 watt rated power which is ours so with all inverters you'll get um like a peak power as well which is normally higher now what that means is, this is 2000 watts, so it will run constantly, it can run constantly at 2000 watt or less, and it's fine. Um, some appliances have a surge of power, so they'll actually use more power for like, maybe a millisecond or even a second when they get switched on, so it will rise, which is what this means here, so you've got surge power. So for one second, this unit can actually pull 6000 watts, which is, which is a lot, so it's three times what it's rated at. And then you can see there for three seconds it can pull 3000 watts and for 10 seconds it can pull 2400 watts now this is down to calculations on your end so you need to see look at your appliances and they will tell you what what their mid, like peak power is so generally the peak power they won't use that's generally just from when you switch them on or start using them um, now the cable calcs i believe will be set well if it was me doing it you'd do it on the max so they'll be set calculated on 6,000 watts and then the 3,000 watt inverters actually got a surge power of 9,000 watts. So that's why they're big cables. Now, like I explained before, our maximum wattage in the van, and we've expanded it as well slightly for future, is 1,500. So we've upped that to 2,000, so we can run this constantly 2,000 with no with none of our appliances have got surge, and if they have, it doesn't go above 2,000 watts. So we've calculated 35 mil cable to here, which is more than enough. And then we've got um, a 200 amp fuse protecting it, so that's protecting the actual cable. Um, because the... At two... 2000 watts the inverter charge is going to be pulling about 125 amps so we need a big enough cable to pull that and then the fuse to protect it so that's what we've got in place um, and then the outgoing ones they do doesn't recommend I haven't seen it anywhere in this manual where it recommends the outgoing which is odd because in the manual online it recommends the outgoing size which is Um, anything else to note on the manual we have so you've got no load power consumption there so it's got a power saving mode so it uses less than 15 watts when it's switched on and nothing's being used on it at all so it'll use 15 watts so another thing the manual says which nearly gave me a heart attack then was it's got input voltage so it's 120 VACs volts AC so that's your shore power now, in the UK, it's 230 volts, whereas in America and other places, some other places, it's 120. I nearly had a heart attack reading that because I thought, oh, darn, are the different units. But it turns out that the manual must obviously be written for the American Renergy, and it's not changed because on the side, which I showed you before and didn't take knowledge of, is show you here it's got ac input so 155 to 275 ac so it's got a lot of tolerance there so in the uk it's roughly 230 but it can jump up to 250 uh, and then the out output voltage you can see how, how much better the output voltage so no matter how it comes in it's going out as 200 to 240 which is vital for your appliances um so yes i am no longer having a heart attack which is great the other thing is the AC input, it's um, 30 amps max. Uh, the input, um, you'll need a, we've got a circuit breaker, so it goes into a fuse box, and we've got a circuit breaker, I think it's rated at 20 amps, so it's less than 30, we don't need any more than 20 amps. So there we are, let's cover that up. So that's just 
that's just a quick overview of this unit. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this installed. Um, once it's all installed, we'll do a full electrical overview of the van. Um, we'll do a bit of re a review on this, just how to go through the settings, how to set it up um, with the control, that, all stuff like that. So basically it's just, I'm new to Renergy and this unit, so this is all new to me. Um, I'm an electrical engineer by trade, so I'm obviously no cables, things like that, but I will try and do a video so it helps give you a full overview if you're buying this to install, obviously, and you can use the video to help you and see. Um, obviously online, it just gives you pictures and words, which are great, but sometimes seeing it visually in someone's hands, getting involved with it is always a bit better. I know it helps me, so. Yes, once that video's up, we will get it posted and let you know. Uh, obviously, subscribe to our channel and we can let you know what's going on and when this will be, the next video will be up. So, thank you all.